Boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, it's going to be a quick rundown of the recent UFC fuel card that was on last night. I'm only going to talk about the last three fights because the rest of the fights were garbage. <laughs> All I want to talk about is pride and how it was resurrected temporarily last night. So we're going to start off with Pecanary Gomi versus Diego Sanchez. Now Diego Sanchez, the little fat fucker, actually came in at 158 pounds. He was overweight. Now Takaneri Gomi on the other hand looked in unbelievable shape, <laughs> probably the best I've ever seen him in a long time. Anyway, so the fight starts off, Takaneri Gomi has got complete abdogon control throughout the first round. Diego Sanchez lands a couple of takedowns, Takaneri Gomi shoots back up, Diego Sanchez can't do shit with him. <laughs> His face already busted up after the first round. Second round is more of a kind of a bit of a feeling out sparring session, third round Kind of similar, but I give the fight to Takaneri Gomi 30-27 easy. No questions asked. So when it goes to the judge's decision, and I hear that one of the judges gives it to Diego Sanchez, my hat starts missing a beat. And then the next decision goes to Takaneri Gomi. And I'm thinking, is Gomi actually going to get screwed in Japan? <laughs> and I found out, yes he is, he gets screwed in Japan. And you know what's so ironic? <laughs> this is the best Takaneri Gomi has ever looked since his Pride Era days. <sighs> and this is the worst Diego Sanchez has ever looked <laughs> since I don't know when. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So that put a sour note on the evening. <laughs> so according to my sources, rumor has it, as soon as Diego Sanchez went backstage, he received a call from a Moroccan prison. <laughs> it was Lee Murray. He'd been sitting in a cell with his iPad watching the fight. And Lee Murray personally congratulated Diego Sanchez <laughs> for overshadowing his heist bank job back in 2007. <laughs> it's unfucking believable and it makes me sick. <laughs> Next up, we had Mark Hunt versus Stefan Struve. Now, this fight was originally supposed to happen last May back at UFC 146. Unfortunately, Mark Hunt suffered an injury and he had to have a layoff for just around about a year. Anyway, Thankfully, this fight got rescheduled, and <laughs> whoa, <laughs> this guy is 38 years old, and he keeps improving with every single fight. <sighs> I mean, I was having palpitations, don't get me wrong, during this fight, because <laughs> Mark Hunt was inside Stefan Struve's car when he should have just stood up. I was thinking, just get the fuck up, Hunt, just get the fuck up, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing, man? <laughs> but, he, but he survived every submission attempt. I mean, Stefan Struve had him in full mount twice during the fight. And at one point, Mark Hunt, Mark Hunt pulled guard on a black belt in jiu-jitsu. A seven foot black belt in jiu-jitsu. This guy gives no fucks whatsoever. <laughs> so anyway, we get to the third round. Both of these guys are pretty tired, they're gassed, but Mark Hunt wraps it up <sighs> in fucking style. I mean, he comes in with the left hook, Stefan Struve drops to the floor like a sack of suds, and Mark Hunt just casually walks off. <laughs> it was beautiful to watch, man. I mean, Stefan Struve just recently posted an x-ray picture on Twitter of his broken jaw. The guy's jaw's in pieces. Mark Hunt was completely gassed. He was completely tired, and he still managed to land a KO which shattered a seven foot giant's jaw. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm a believer, man. I believe in the Mark Hunt story. The guy's an underdog. He's got four straight wins. He's got to be due a title shot. I say, I say he takes on the winner of the Junior De Santos, Alistair Overeem fight. And then from there, it's a title shot. <laughs> That's what I say. What do you think? <laughs> and then we come to the main event. Vandalay Silva versus Brian Stan. <laughs> now, I'm a big Vandalay Silva fan. But I literally gave him zero chance to win in this fight. Just because Stan is such a heavy hitter. <sighs> Silva's IQ 
fighter IQ just seems to, you know, he, he would rather put on a show than actually win. And that's why I admire him so much. And the fact that his jaw is just completely gone, I gave him no chance in this fight. I gotta be honest, man. I, I was really... I didn't even really want to watch this fight because I just thought it was going to be a very brutal KO for Vandalay Silva and that fucking Brian Stan with his patriotic bullshit was just going to like, it was just going to make me sick to my stomach. I was almost tempted to turn the whole thing off. <laughs> but these two guys came out like fucking wild animals. <laughs> it was crazy. It was literally like watching a fight on fast forwards. These guys were throwing bombs. It was incredible. <laughs> there was a couple of times where I thought Vandalay was finished. And there was a couple of times I thought Stan was finished. Then we got... It was like... I would say the first round was arguably the best first, first round of any fight I've ever seen. Matching close to the Nick Diaz-Paul Daly fight. And then we get to the second round and Vandalay somehow managed to land a right hook. The clipping... Brian Stan, he comes, he swarms on him like an animal. He actually KOs Brian Stan. I couldn't believe my fucking eyes. Vandalay Silva wins in spectacular fashion. The old dog has still got some fucking fight in him. I think this weight class at light heavyweight suits him. He's got more power. He seems to be able to absorb more shots to the chin. It was a glorious, beautiful night for Pride. It's just a shame Gomi got robbed, but what the fuck. As long as the fans know who won, that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Pride never dies, buddy! <laughs> oh, yeah!